Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Wow, the DJI Mini 4 Pro. What an amazing piece of technology. If you're in Canada and have just bought one or are considering getting one, please watch this video to understand what regulations do and do not apply to the Mini 4. I'll cover that, answer some common questions, and provide you with some practical guidelines for safe and happy droning. Let's get into it. Drone regulations in Canada cover drones in three weight classes. Those below 250 grams, those from 250 grams to 25 kilograms inclusive, and drones over 25 kilograms. The weight classification is based upon the takeoff weight of your drone, including the battery and any accessories. The Mini 4 Pro with the standard battery, a micro SD card, and an ND filter weighs in just a hair under 250 grams with basically no wiggle room. If you add anything else to the drone, a strobe, the heavier plus battery, or even the compatible but heavier Mini 3 battery, you'll be over 250 grams. At that point, the full extent of the Transport Canada Part 9 rules come into effect. More on that later. So for the moment, let's focus on your Mini 4 without any extras. As long as it is less than 250 grams, then only one Canadian drone regulation applies, 900.06. 900.06 applies to all drones, and I call it the don't do anything stupid rule. No person shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person. In other words, stay well away from anywhere manned aircraft are flying or might be flying. And secondly, don't fly recklessly around people. In short, yeah, don't do anything stupid. 900.06 is the only drone regulation that applies to sub 250 gram drones like the Mini 4, but there are other rules that can restrict where you can fly, so listen carefully. First of all, there are over 100 places designated as Class F restricted zones across Canada, including Parliament Hill and Niagara Falls. They are designated with a code, CYR, then three numbers. Parliament Hill, for example, is CYR 537. Unless you have permission, you cannot fly any drone or manned aircraft in these areas. Class F restricted zones are shown in red in the Drone Pilot Canada app, the Drone Site Selection Tool, and the Nav Drone app. You cannot rely upon your DJI Fly app to stop you from flying in these areas. Typically, it will give you a warning, but if you just click OK and continue, you will be breaking the law and can be fined thousands of dollars. Also, there can be temporary no-fly zones that pop up, often related to wildfires, law enforcement activity, or special events like the Grey Cup. They're raised by notices called NOTAMs and are shown in the Drone Pilot Canada app and Nav Drone app. The DJI Fly app will not show them. Do not fly in these no-fly zones. And even if there isn't a NOTAM in effect, do not fly your Mini 4 anywhere near wildfires or any other type of emergency operation. There's a good chance that water bombers or medevac helicopters could be flying in these areas and you do not want to interfere with their crucial operations. Flying a drone within 10 kilometers of a wildfire can result in a huge fine. You also cannot fly from or over national parks without special permission. The reason is that studies have shown that wild animals can be massively stressed by the high-pitched whining of a drone, even at long distances. So be kind and stay away from national parks. On top of all these restrictions, you'll need permission to take off or land from private property, most provincial parks, and surprisingly, many municipal parks. For municipal parks, check your local bylaws to be sure. From an aviation perspective, it is permitted to fly over private property and provincial or municipal parks, but you are still subject to other rules. 
you cannot violate people's privacy by, say, taking pictures of their backyards. And just like any other activities, you cannot interfere with someone's enjoyment of a public or private place, nor can you harass wildlife, such as flying over ducks on a pond. Here are six fundamental guidelines you should keep in mind. Now, they're just my guidelines, but failure to follow safe guidelines like these ones may be considered reckless or negligent, and as such could be a violation of that 900.06 regulation. Number one, keep your drone within visual line of sight and not more than 500 meters away. Now here's the catch. The Mini 4 is so small, if you take your eyes off it for a second, you may not be able to spot it again. So at the very least, know where your drone is in the airspace and keep that patch of sky in sight. So you'll be better prepared to take appropriate action if something goes wrong. Second, don't fly if you've been drinking or are under the influence of drugs. Flying a drone is tricky enough and can require quick reflexes and good judgment, neither of which is likely if you're stoned or drunk. Now, even though there are no specific altitude limits for a sub-250 gram drone, stay below 120 meters and really low, like 30 meters if you're anywhere near an airport, in controlled airspace, or say where seaplanes might be operating. Don't fly if the temperature or wind is outside the spec for the Mini 4. You run the risk of losing your expensive drone, and warranties don't usually apply if you're flying outside the operating limits. Fifth guideline, stay away from manned aircraft and where manned aircraft are likely to operate. Airports, heliports, hospitals, forest fires, and emergency areas. Finally, don't fly near or over people, especially crowds of people. If you're zooming right over people's heads, somebody's going to get hurt. With those guidelines in mind, let's get into some specific questions. First of all, do I need to register my Mini 4? No, but if you fly with the heavier plus battery, you are suddenly doing what is called a basic operation because you're over 250 grams and then you do need to register your drone. Now, registration is super easy and costs only five bucks. The good news is that registering your drone doesn't automatically mean you are subject to the basic or advanced drone rules. They will apply only when your drone is actually over 250 grams for your flight, such as when you're using a plus, a plus battery. But do I need to get a drone pilot certificate? Well, it's exactly the same story. As long as your drone is under 250 grams, you do not need to be certified. You can fly without any drone pilot certification. But if you're flying with a heavier battery, yes, you will need at least a basic pilot certificate. This is fairly easy to attain. It's an online multiple choice exam that costs $10 per attempt. And I have a number of great videos you can watch, but at least check out my basic study guide video. There's a link in the description below. On top of that, the Drone Pilot Association of Canada has created a great DPAC safety course, really informative, whether you're new to drones or experienced. Okay, but I looked on the Transport Canada drone safety page and I see all sorts of rules about basic and advanced operations. If I'm flying a Mini 4, which one am I? Answer, neither one. Basic or advanced operations and all their applicable rules are for drones weighing 250 grams or more. Okay, I get it. I'll stay away from airports and heliports, but how do I know where they are? There are three tools that properly show Canadian airports and heliports. The Drone Pilot Canada app, which I am the co-developer of, the NavDrone app and its corresponding website, and the Drone Site Selection Tool website. All of these tools have special sub 250 gram views that show no fly zones in red and caution areas in yellow for drones like the Mini 4. While you can fly in these yellow caution areas, these represent areas where manned aircraft should really be expected. So I strongly recommend you stay below 30 meters or 100 feet above ground level. If you stay low, 
you are not likely going to encounter manned aircraft unless they're landing or taking off. And for that reason, you should never fly at the ends of airport runways. Also stay away from hospitals, since most hospitals have heliports, and be extremely careful around potential seaplane operations. Now, please note that the tools I mention here show only registered, certified, or military aerodromes. Planes and helicopters can also operate from small private airfields, like farmers' fields, that are not shown on any official tools. So please keep your ears and eyes open at all times. Moving on, can I fly my Mini 4 in controlled airspace, like Class C airspace? Again, yes, you can technically, but controlled airspace is where manned aircraft hang out when landing or taking off from major airports. So air traffic is likely to exist and you need to be extra careful. And controlled airspace like class C, D or E starts right at the ground level. Unfortunately, most major cities are largely covered in controlled airspace from the ground up. Now, if you're new to aviation or drones, all this jargon like controlled airspace can be bewildering and surprising. Make your life simple and always check one of the tools I mentioned to see if you're in controlled airspace. And again, stay below 30 meters above the ground if you are. Now, if you're doing real estate shots with your Mini 4, 30 meters is perfectly fine to get a great perspective on a property. But hang on, the Mini 4 is a DJI drone. Surely I can rely on the DJI FlySafe map to keep me flying safely and legally. No, absolutely not. The DJI FlySafe map does not reflect Canadian regulations and is missing many no-fly zones. Please, please, please do not rely upon your drone's built-in map to determine if it is legal to fly. You must check the Drone Pilot Canada app, the Drone Site Selection Tool, or the NavDrone app for proper representation of Canadian drone airspace. Here's a simple example. You can unlock your drone in a Class F restricted zone with the tap of a button, but your flight would be absolutely illegal and could bring you a $1,000 fine. So consider any warnings from DJI restrictions as a strong reminder to check out one of the tools I just mentioned before doing an unlock. Okay, can I fly over people with my Mini 4? Technically, yes, because none of the regular drone rules apply if you are less than 250 grams. But please be careful. Don't fly recklessly by zooming right over people's heads and certainly avoid flying over crowds. I mentioned real estate videos earlier. Can I use my Mini 4 for commercial drone work like real estate shots? Yes, you can fly your Mini 4 or any drone for that matter for money in Canada. Unlike in the US, the Canadian drone regulations do not differentiate between commercial or recreational flights. All the same rules, or lack of rules in the case of micro drones, apply. Do privacy laws apply to the Mini 4? Yes, they sure do. I suggest you read the privacy guidelines on the Transport Canada Drone Safety website. They're pretty good. The golden rule here is not to take images of people or their possessions where they would reasonably expect privacy, like in their backyards, for example. Always err on the side of respect and stay back sufficiently such that you can't identify people. Ask permission whenever it's possible. And if someone complains about where you're flying, don't start arguing. Respectfully and safely end your flight. Feel free to discuss the situation once your drone is safely on the ground, but don't get into a heated debate. It's not worth it. Last question. I have my advanced ARPAS pilot certificate. Can I perform an advanced operation with my Mini 4 while using the Plus battery? Well, I'll say yes, because the safety declaration for the Mini 4 Pro is likely to come through any day now. But at the time of this recording, the Mini 4 is not showing on the Transport Canada list of drones eligible for advanced operations. So right now, at least, 
you'd be limited to basic operations outside of controlled airspace, for example. So there you have it. Only one RPAS rule applies in Canada for drones under 250 grams, the don't do anything stupid rule. But there are four other no-fly zone cases you need to be aware of and plenty of other things to consider when you're flying your Mini 4 Pro. I hope you've found this video helpful in explaining the regulations and providing some reasonable guidelines. Lastly, please consider joining the Drone Pilot Association of Canada, representing recreational and small commercial drone pilots. It's free, and we offer a free safety course, great for new and experienced drone pilots. And there's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.